Shale gas is the same substance as natural gas produced from conventional deposits, which has originated as a result of transformation of organic material at high temperatures and at large depths, but was trapped in a different reservoir, in claystones and mudstones, commonly referred to as shales. Shale gas resources in Poland are estimated at 346 to 768 billion cubic meters. Given the current gas consumption levels in the country, our shale gas and conventional gas resources may satisfy our needs for nearly 65 years. Natural gas is the cleanest and most environmentally friendly of all fossil fuels. Its combustion is characterized by low emissions of air pollutants compared with other energy carriers and generates no waste. One of the initial stages of the natural gas exploration process consists in seismic work. It involves sending into the subsurface seismic waves generated using a set of special self-propelled apparatus. Seismic waves are reflected by boundaries between geological strata. Varying physical properties of rocks cause changes in the parameters of the reflected waves, which are specific to the kind of rock from which a wave reflects. The waves are recorded on the surface using a measurement system which uses geophones as the main element. In the course of seismic surveys, geological profiles are produced. They show the depth, thickness and arrangement of strata, including potentially gas-bearing strata. Seismic investigations are safe to people, animals and buildings. Use of non-intrusive sources to generate seismic waves minimizes impact on the environment, while precise control of the produced vibrations allows such survey methods to be used in cities and towns in the immediate vicinity of buildings. Seismic surveys have no impact on the levels or quality of groundwater either. Preparation of a site for installation of a drilling rig begins with construction of access roads, followed by stripping of topsoil layers and depositing them in the form of embankments. The foundation of the drilling rig is reinforced and tightened using concrete slabs. Protective foil is additionally laid where necessary in places such as the machine park, mud storage facilities, fuel and lubricant storage facilities or under waste containers. As a drilling site typically covers a limited area, usually of no more than 1.5 hectares, it does not destroy landscape and is not a nuisance to the neighboring communities. A drilling site takes less space than a standard shopping center. Drilling into a rock, the bit moves downwards, deepening a vertical borehole. A special fluid called mud which is pumped in, helps to carry out drill cuttings, to cool and lubricate the drilling bit and to ensure borehole stability. Drilling boreholes does not cause any onerous long-term noise. Produced noise levels can be compared to traffic noise. The drill string and bit are usually taken out after completion of drilling of a section. The empty borehole continues to be secured with the mud, which being a physical and a chemical barrier does not permeate into the surrounding rock and does not interfere with the water-bearing strata. After a section has been drilled, the casing pipes are inserted into the borehole. Next, cement is pumped into the space between the casing pipes and the borehole walls in order to seal the borehole and protect the groundwaters from any potential pollution. In order to ensure even greater safety, Additional casing strings are often used. These are also sealed with concrete. Once the vertical borehole has been completed to the required depth, the drilling assembly is fitted with specialist devices used to drill horizontal boreholes and enabling continuous measurement of the drill bit position. A moving system used in the drilling device enables moving the device along its axis. Thus, on the surface, boreholes can be drilled at a distance of 5 to 10 meters from one another. But 3 kilometers down the subsurface, the distance between them may reach even 300 meters. This way, surface operations carried out within an area of 1.5 hectares may cover up to 40 hectares in the subsurface. 
The horizontal drilling method is used to build and operate an extensive network of boreholes from a single drilling platform, which allows to limit the adverse impact of drilling operations on the landscape. If the technology applied to extract gas from the conventional sources were used, a greater number of drilling platforms would have to be erected. Once the horizontal section is completed, production tubing is inserted into the borehole and again cemented. The cement fills the space between the production tubing and the rock walls, sealing the borehole. Once drilling is over, the drilling rig is removed and the borehole is prepared for production. The next stage consists in perforation of the lower part of the borehole, done using a casing perforator. A casing perforator produces a network of microfractures and microcracks in the casing, cement and rock, clearing the way for the gas to enter a production well. As perforation is performed at a considerable depth, it produces no effects which would be felt on the surface. It also has no effect on the rock layers deposited at shallower depths. To allow gas to escape to the surface, a shale rock formation must be fractured to produce fairways through which gas can move. In order to do that, fracturing fluid is pumped into a borehole, up to 20,000 cubic meters per borehole. Hydraulic fracturing is a process divided into 100 meter stages carried out continuously over several days. The fluid is pumped into the well under high pressure and enters the fractures, causing further cracking and breaking of the rock. To ensure safety, the entire operation is monitored on an ongoing basis. The water used in the fracturing process is purchased from a municipal utility under a contract governed by civil law, or if the drilling company has access to a private water intake, is drawn from the intake on the basis of a water permit. The amount of water used in the hydraulic fracturing process has no adverse effect on the ecological balance of the natural environment. Estimates made by the Polish Geological Institute show that the annual consumption of water to carry out 200 fracturing treatment operations over a period of four years represents about 1.3% of the water used by other industrial establishments and about 0.6% of the aggregate registered consumption of underground water. Sand is added to the fracturing fluid to ensure that the fractures remain open once the pressure is reduced. Thus, opened fractures enable a controlled flow of the gas up the well. The fracturing fluid is 95% water. The rest of the mixture is sand, 4.5%, and chemicals, 0.5%. The chemicals are used in small quantities and therefore completely neutral to the environment. They are the same chemicals as those used in households or in the food, cosmetics, or pharmaceutical industries. The type and composition of the chemicals added to the fracturing fluid is selected depending on the results of analysis of rock samples taken from the borehole. Upon completion of the fracturing operation, a considerable proportion of the fluid, that is, from 40 to 60% of the injected volume, flows back to the surface. Any recovered fluid is stored in an isolated tight tank and may be reused for further fracturing treatments or, after pretreatment, may be utilized as an effluent by a specialized company in dedicated facilities, example, in a wastewater treatment plant. Guaranteed tightness of all the devices used in the process and the fact that it is performed at a depth of over 3,000 meters are additional factors ensuring safety of the hydraulic fracturing process. All of this eliminates the possibility of the fracturing fluid becoming mixed with water in the water-bearing layers, which are found no more than 200 meters in the subsurface. The perforation and fracturing processes are performed one by one in subsequent horizontal sections. Once they are completed, production of the gas that now escapes into the surface may be launched. On the surface, the whole opening is secured with a production wellhead, which is completely tight. 
and therefore ensures safety of the operations to people and to the environment. Further stage consists in construction of the gas processing facility and a pipeline laid underground connecting the well to the transmission network. If production is not launched, the drilling site is fully reclaimed. The reclamation process consists in restoring the original relief and regulation of the water courses. The humus, amassed in embankments surrounding the drilling site, is spread out, which is followed by its agrotechnical treatment consisting in picking up and carrying away the slabs and rubble. The process also involves soil fertilization, plowing, harrowing and sowing plants. If production is not commenced, the land surrounding the isolated protected zone is subject to exactly the same reclamation treatment. The experience we have had to date warrants a claim that an active gas collection facility is not a serious landscape interference because, depending on the transmission infrastructure provided, its area may be about 500 square meters or may indeed be limited to that of a home garden. A gas production facility is nearly invisible, non-onerous, and is a landscape feature just like a shop or a small petrol station.